All right, guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be reviewing this Kunkin Digital Load. Now, before I really get into this video, I just want to mention that it's not sponsored content. Uh, the vendor didn't send me this to test out or the manufacturer. Uh, I am going to put a link in the description to one of the models uh, from uh, on Amazon, uh, but it, it may be the 400 watt version instead of the 200 watt. I don't think the 200 watt is available uh, on Amazon at the moment, uh, but the 400 watt version is, uh, which that one has the uh, digital output on it too. Uh, the 200 watt doesn't come with a digital output, but I didn't need it or want it. From what I've heard, the software isn't the best out there. Uh, it's basically a copy of an old version of LabVIEW that they kind of put their own skin on and it, it, I've heard it's kind of buggy. Uh, I personally haven't used it, but that's just from reading reviews online. Uh, so that's why I just went with the 200 watt kits because I didn't need uh, 400 watts and uh, the, the only thing that would have sold me on the 400 watt was the software. But from what I read, the software was kind of unusual, which that's not unusual for some of these Chinese uh, manufacturers of test equipment so they'll provide software but the software is not very useful but yeah let's actually just get right into this review we're gonna tear this thing open and then we'll uh power it up afterwards okay so i'm not big on the whole unboxing thing so it's already out of the box but i just want to show you this is the box that it comes in uh, it does come with plenty of styrofoam padding on either side to kind of protect it you can tell my box got pretty beat up in shipping but i don't have any dents or anything on it so yep that is the box that came in with their 10 years of concentration and wisdom so let's actually take a look at the unit itself and who cares what the box looks like so let's do the kind of unboxing that people on this channel care about there we go i already took the screws out so, uh, yeah, that's a kind of useless side profile of it. So let me get this camera adjusted. All right, so we're not really going to dissect this whole circuit board here, but just to give you kind of an idea of what the difference in the 400 watt and the 200 watt version is, is you'd have a second heat sink here with three more of these FETs. So that way it can handle that, that load, that extra 400, uh, 200 watts on there. So basically you just double what's on here. Uh, you'll also, all of this will be populated, which this is for the data outputs on here. You got the serial connection and then I don't even know what that one was. Uh, but yeah, it has the two different uh, connections there. Uh, on the 400 watt version. So all of that would be populated. You would also have a second one of these uh, current shunts like this right here. Uh, so that way it can do the current sensing for that. Uh, it probably has a different version of the firmware on there, which uh, this is just a STM32. Uh, it looks like you have a JTAG connection right here. Uh, looks like a serial connection, um, but I, I have to check the pins to verify that that is actually uh, JTAG. Not not really sure what uh, these other two connectors are. They just say J3, J4. One of the things I do like about the construction of this is everything has a connector on it. All the wires uh, have a connector for them. Uh, it, with an exception of these, they didn't use the spade connectors. They just soldered that on, but these are on connectors. Um, from what it looks like on the 400 watt version, they just solder a wire through to get down to those FETs down there. Uh, so these would just have two wires soldered in. So those are not on a connector either in that version. Um, so kind of the only thing that I find somewhat suspicious looking at them is uh, we got international rectifiers from 2010 in a circuit board that was manufactured in 2020 so these may not be genuine vets in there but i mean for the price we paid and from the reviews online this thing has a pretty good reputation of working well so i wouldn't be too worried about that but that is just one thing to think about is international international rectifier has been acquired these may not be genuine but who knows? All right, so construction-wise, though, everything seems pretty good. I, I do like that everything has a connector, so that way if you want to take this apart and work on it, you can. Uh, my two complaints on this unit is, um, one, the solder on the current shunt doesn't flow all the way through on either side of it. It doesn't flow all the way through, so there's inadequate wetting and flow through to the other side. So I'm going to need to reflow this and uh, get, do a better job of soldering that on there for them. Uh, the, the other thing is these, uh, these are not the best banana connectors here. Yeah, the, these are, holes are a little bit oversized. So let me just take a regular banana connector and put it in there. These cheaper banana connectors that have the, the, uh, ones that kind of spin on there, they, they're pretty loose in it. 
So they, they got, got a lot of wobble in there. So these holes are a little bit oversized, it, it seems, compared to other ones. Uh, a little more high end of a banana connector does go in a little tighter, but it's still kind of loose and wobbly in there. So it's not the best that you could get. Luckily, though, these are just screwed in. They're not a soldered in one. So as you can see, these are just screwed into the housing with the wire that goes through it. So definitely these can be replaced, which is great. So probably replace these in the future. But yeah, it's it, they're not horrible. It's just if you're going to with the 200 watt version, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. 400 watts, if you have a bad connection there, if your BNC kind of doesn't, or your banana connector isn't that great on there, uh, you, you could get heat in there and you could start to melt this or melt your connector. And that, that just, that'd be a bad day or you could have sparking. So uh, you really do want a tight connection there. The, the other thing is, as you can see, they don't have the hole where you can just put the wire through and uh, put it down. You could use a spade connector on there, and I think it actually does include those. I think that's what you call those little U-hooked ones, a spade connector. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it did include those in the box. I'd have to look again. Um, but I, I much prefer to use these banana connectors. So that's it for like kind of looking at the inside here. There's not too much to look at. The main thing I wanted to show in this teardown though is that these uh, 200 watt versions, the KP182, they, they don't populate any of this stuff in there. I was hoping they just didn't put the connector on there so that way we could still try to connect into it. Uh, but since they don't populate any of this, um, you're not going to be able to, to use the software at all because uh, it's, it's the same exact board. So I was, I was hoping it wasn't, uh, that it was populated. So that way you just had to put a connector on there and use it. Just trying to get the feature out of it. Not that I really want to use it at all. Um, so I just wanted to show that because I hadn't seen any teardowns of these 182s. Uh, I could I could only find videos of the 184s and uh, teardowns. So I wanted to show that. Uh, but yeah, it is the same board. Pretty high quality. The solder joints really look fine other than on this current shunt. So uh, I'm just going to reflow that current shunt and call it good. Do me one, they put a warranty void kind of quality control sticker on there. So they're going to know you took it apart uh, if you uh, take it apart. We all know here in the United States, it's actually illegal to void somebody's warranty for taking the product apart. The FTC will not be happy about that. But uh, that is just something to be aware of is they might give you a hard time about your warranty if you uh, do modify this and fix their crappy solder joint so yeah that that takes care of that let's put this unit back together now okay so before we get into the review of this i just want to mention that this flickering you see is an artifact of the refresh rate of the camera and this is not something you see in person pretty common on these kind of screens to see that on camera all right so let's uh, just give this a little peel here All right, so now that we have peeled that off, let's take a very quick look here at the manual. So it's a black and white manual that actually goes over uh, a lot of the details on it. Some of it, it's it. This is a generalized one between the the KP one eighty two and the one eighty four, which I have the one eighty two, the two hundred watt version that does not have the uh, connection here. But um, yeah, let's go over here and we can see it documents all of the settings in here. So it's not the worst manual that I've ever seen for one of these. The first thing I want to do with it is because if you notice it beeps and it's a really obnoxious beep. Let's go to shift and get the menu pulled up. So now we have menu and we're going to go down here and come to sound. And we're going to go and turn that off and set that and there we go now it does not beep anymore so the obnoxious beep is gone i can't 
understand the beep that they put in all of this Chinese equipment. All right, so before we take a look at this in action, let's talk about this BNC connector real quick. Uh, what this is, is a vSense, so that way you can do a remote vSense. It still does voltage sense through the BNC uh, through the banana connectors here so that way you don't always have to use it but you do have this as an option so they include in the box here a little bnc co uh, connector so it comes like that you get this bnc connector that you can wire up yourself you just solder your wire you got your ground and your positive in there uh, and do that so that is what's included most of us probably already have one of these laying around so no big deal there if you want to use that voltage the remote voltage sense to give you a more accurate uh, voltage sense so um, you have a couple of different modes on here you have the constant wattage uh, constant resistance constant current and constant voltage are your kind of common modes there um, so we will use constant current here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really kind of it for the overview of what this unit looks like. All right. So let's, uh, go ahead and talk about how to set this thing. So we are in constant current mode. So let's go ahead and click set. And now we can set this. So let's say we want a half an amp or we want one and a half amps or we want two and a half amps. So let's go ahead and just set it to two and a half amps. Go ahead and just click the set button and now we're set now to turn it on which we already have this on this is set to a maximum amperage of three and a half i think is what i set it to it may be at three um but it's in constant voltage mode for 14.3 uh we got 14.3 and this is in constant current mode so let's go ahead and turn it on so that gives us our two and a half amps and it says about two and a half amps there so that's that's pretty accurate on here uh, with its current, but it says it's 14.3, but we're seeing 13.91 and 13.95 there. So I would trust these uh, voltmeters before I trust that one on there. So let's go ahead and turn this off. Uh, let's set it down to one and a half amps set, turn that on, and we can see again the current is pretty accurate on here. Now I need to rearrange this to put this where we're doing current sensing instead of voltage. Okay, so now let's check the accuracy of the amp meter on here with the power supply and the multimeter. Now we are wired up in series instead of parallel. We're going through the 20 amp and we are in the 20 amp mode and we are set to uh, 750 milliamps. Let's go ahead and turn that on and we can see that it thinks it's pulling exactly 750 milliamps and this says it's providing 7.46 and this says uh, just because it doesn't give enough digits for us here um, we have 740 milliamps. So let's set this uh, a little higher so let's go ahead and turn that off set it to let's go ahead and go back down uh, to five and there we go now we're at one and a half amps again let's turn that on and we are pretty close to one and a half amps so i would say this is accurate enough for the price range we're paying i i'm happy with what we're seeing here results wise with our current meter what it thinks it's getting and what it thinks it's getting here so that is accurate enough for being uh in its price range. All right, before I uh, end this video, I just wanna show that power supply is actually not as inaccurate as I thought. So uh, I was curious if it really was just voltage drop from those wires, because it's not that long of a run of wires. So I didn't think it would be, but it is just from the wires. So if we turn it on, um, you know, we're seeing the 14.11, uh, which is kind of what we would see roughly if we came down here with this. Let me see, you know, 14.14. And then if we go back up there, we see 14.31, uh, 14.3. So, yeah, that's just the voltage drop across the wire. So, power supply is not as inaccurate as I thought. So, that just goes to show why you should not trust your output display here to 
to your actual load and you should do your voltage sensing at where the load is. So that way the unit under test is actually getting the voltage that you're assuming that it is getting. Okay guys, well I hope you have enjoyed my review of this Kunkin KP182. Um, the too long didn't watch of this video is that it's a pretty good deal and it's a pretty accurate machine. Uh, I didn't go into super precise measurements here. I mean, I am using a 30 year old multimeter and some cheaper Chinese uh, digital power supplies. I did test off camera with the other one and had the same results. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm happy with the quality of this. I will be keeping it. Um, I think this is a good deal for if you just need to get something new. Uh, definitely do recommend though keeping an eye on the used market of professional equipment too. Uh, for the price you pay for this, uh, you can get uh, some of the um, dyna loads that are the analog adjustments on there with the uh, analog meters on them. Uh, for, for a little bit cheaper, but they are lower current rated ones. To so get one, a dyna load that um, has this kind of current rating on it, you, you would be paying probably twice as much as this. So definitely worth keeping an eye on some of the um, aftermarket ones. If you need some with software, you can keep an eye on some of the Sorensen uh, ones. But again, those can get pretty expensive. Same with um, Zantac, I believe is how you'd say the name of the company, or Zantrax, something like that. Um, they are, Sorensen and them are like the same thing. Um, but uh, th those have really good software and can be controlled in lab view. Uh, I believe um, uh, Siglent makes a pretty good digital load too. Um, so definitely some other ones you can keep an eye out on. Oh, and for the regular viewers of the channel, if you're wondering why I bought this, it's because I really do want to do more of this uh, power conversion uh, stuff. I find it very interesting. So you probably expect to see more of this. I didn't get it for batteries. You would. This is something you would use if you were building and testing and discharging and charging uh, batteries. This can be very useful for that too. I would be using it for uh, just a, a load for load testing and uh, doing some of these, these uh, power supplies that I, I want to design. So um, my next project that I'll be using this with is probably going to be a 75 watt to 80 watt um, boost converter going from 12 volts to 24 volts and it'll be um, the 80 watts will be on that 24 volt side of it. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one.